الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله Last week we talked about the manners, the etiquettes, the akhlaq, the good manners that our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has ordered us to have. <coughs> and we have been sent akmal al-nas, sayyid al-nas sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The most perfect of human beings was sent to us. And he was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The ulama has said <coughs> that he was the height of perfection. No human being had ever walked this earth. And no human being will ever walk the earth after him. More perfect in his way. More perfect in the way he dealt with his wives. More perfect in the way he dealt with the children. More perfect in the way he dealt with non-Muslims. More perfect in the way he dealt with other people. No one is more perfect than him. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And we have the height of perfection. And the only reason that Allah has put him in this ummah as a rahmah, as a mercy for you and I. But what's the point? If we're not going to follow perfection, if we're not going to be perfect, we can't be like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Walakin, there are certain things in his akhlaq, his manners, his character that we can live up to. We can follow his character in how he dealt with his wives. We can follow his character in how he dealt with children. We can follow his character in how he dealt with people who, who wanted to do bad things with him. Uh, today, inshallah, we're going to have three examples of how our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dealt with young. And many of us, subhanAllah, have children. But look at this example. We find that Anas, radiallahu anhu, he was a young man, under on the, on the, on the age of 10, and he said that when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to Medina from Mecca, that Abu Talha took him by the hand as a young child and went to the Prophet and said to the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, Anas here, he is an intelligent man, a young man, and I want to put him in khidmah, in service. I want him to serve him, Ya Rasulullah. <laughs> and the Prophet agreed to have Anas as a servant. And Anas said, for nine years, <coughs> he, he served the Prophet at home and in traveling. For, one, for nine years, the Prophet <laughs> was served by Anas. And in nine years, you imagine if in nine years you're going to see a lot of things. You're going to see who this man is. Yeah, you're living with this man. <laughs> <laughs> and he said that in nine years, never once did he hit him. Never once did he shout at him. Never once did he smack him. Never once did he frown Abasa in his face. Not once did he do these things in nine years. And now many of us, we have children, very difficult not to smile, not to be angry, maybe not to raise your temper. For, for, for nine years, the Prophet never did this with Anas. <laughs> and an example that Sayyidina Anas once, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Anas, go and do a certain, a certain thing. I want, I want you to go and do a certain job for you. And Anas' reply was, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to, la ya Rasulullah, la adhab. I'm not going to do it. Now you imagine this is, يعني, this is rude. He left adab. But he's a young man. And he said he went out to the street and he went to the soup, the marketplace, and he found a group of young children playing and he went to play with them. And he said that in my heart though, in my heart, I was going to do what the Prophet wanted me to do, but I just, I replied in the way I replied. But in my heart, I wanted to do it. So he went out and he's playing with the children. And then in the middle of the playing, he said there's two hands, cool, even though it's very hot, and a beautiful smell. And these hands are on my eyes. And I realized it was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from behind me and he covered my eyes. And I looked up, I looked up at him. And what do you expect that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to have? What's the response? What would your response be? Your son has disobeyed you. I said no to your face. 
And you go and find them in the marketplace playing around, disobeying. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his hadith written by Imam Muslim. And I said, I looked and he was smiling at me. And he said, have you gone yet? Have you, have you gone to do the thing I've told you to do? And, and I said, I'm going and I am Rasulullah and I'll have. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam wa sallam wa radallahu anhu. These are the akhlaq. Uh, this is how to deal with your children. Uh, using the psychology of how to deal with children. And in one example, another example, how to deal with people who are bad to you. Uh, we find an example <coughs> that a woman who was from the Jewish faith, that she roasted some lamb and she gave it to the Prophet and she put poison in it. And our Prophet accepted it. Which is interesting that the Prophet accepted food from non-Muslims. From a woman who's of the Jewish faith. This is a proof that we can accept gifts from non-Muslims. Obviously the food was halal, obviously. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam gathered the Sahaba and he began, and they began to, just about to eat. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam found that the piece of meat Al-Yara'ah spoke to him and said, Don't eat me, Ya Rasulullah, I am poison. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam raised his voice and said, Irfu'u aydiyakum, lift your hands, O oh, Sahaba, don't eat from this. This is an assassination attempt on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by a woman of the Jewish faith. So our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered the woman to come. And she was brought forward. And he said to her, why? Why did you try and poison me? <coughs> and she said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I said to myself, that if you are really a prophet, because she didn't believe in him, you see, if you are really a prophet, then this food will not affect you. A miracle will happen, and you'll be protected. And if you're not a prophet, which I believe, or well, I did believe you weren't, then, you will be killed and we will have got a ridden of a person claiming to be a prophet and somebody claiming, claiming to be a position, in a position of wealth, a position of, of authority and we would have got rid of a tyrant. And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his, his reply. What would be your reply? You go to a restaurant, some people they go to restaurants and you know, they have problems, they have stomach problems and they end up cursing out. The, these people in the restaurants. We look at our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, "Ah, he forgave them." This is a, a many, many proofs in this particular episode. Uh, we don't hate people who are Jewish or Christian. We don't hate them. The fact that the Prophet took this meat from her, and the fact that she poisoned, and the fact that he forgave her sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is enough of a, of a proof. We don't hate the Kitab. The fact that we can marry. Ahl Kitab, the conditions prove that we don't hate non-Muslims. Ahl Kitab. And finally, inshallah ta'ala, in the third, last example, a, a Bedouin, and we mentioned that the Bedouin, al arab the people who live in the desert, in the very harsh climate, not much water, they become very tough. Their characters become very tough. They have to be tough because they're living in difficult situations. And in particular, Bedouin came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the Prophet was wearing a thick coat. And he had a thick collar. And this Bedouin came and he grabbed the Prophet by his coat and he pulled the coat. And Abu Huraira said, I noticed that the coat أثرت على هنقه That the coat that it made a mark on the Prophet's neck And his neck became red. And this Bedouin said, Oh Messenger of Allah, give me some of the money that you have. And he told the Prophet, I want you to put it on my camel. Because this money it's not, this money is Allah's, and it's not yours, and it's not your father's money. So this is, look, yeah. this is قلة الأدب في الكلام وقلة الأدب في الأفعال. He had rudeness in his speech, criticizing the Prophet, and saying something about him and his father, and then pulling his coat and being rude. How? Imagine somebody, imagine the person behind you in the khutbah now pulled you back in your coat. And your neck became red. What's your reply going to be? Look at the reply of our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He then he smiled and he looked at him and he said, "Look, 
This money belongs to Allah wa ana abduhu. I am his slave. Oh, well, I am I'm a slave. I'm doing what he told me to do. And he said to the he said to the Bedouin, look, I'm going to retaliate against you. I want to I want to do something to you, you know, to revenge. Because you've, you've done something to me, now I'm going to repay now. I'm going to reply back to you. Do you, do you agree with this? Do you agree with me to get my back now, get my revenge back on you? And uh, Bedouin said, I don't think you're going to do that. He said, I, I don't think you're going to do this. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, why? Why? Why am I not going to reply back to you? Why am I, why am I not going to do something back to you? And then Bedouin, he said, لَأَنَّكَ لَا تُكَافِئُ بِالسَّيِّئَةِ سَيِّئَةِ You don't reply back with, to someone who's rude with rudeness. If someone's bad to you, you don't, you're not bad to them. And I know that you're not like this. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet smiled. And he gave this man two camels worth of barley, shari'ah, and two camels worth of dates. Like in this, these examples are for you and I to leave the khutbah. To go back to our work, go back to our families, go back to our children, and go back to our the week ahead if we live long enough, inshallah ta'ala, and use these examples. How to be in the workplace with people who are Muslim? How to be with people who are rude if they're young or your age? How to be how to deal with your wife who's rude to you? Look at the example of our Prophet sallallahu and be like him. Don't say, who are Rasulullah? We can't be like the Prophet. Now you can't be like the Prophet. Like, what's the point of Allah sending him to you if you're not going to follow him? So use these examples. And these are not just stories for you to come and feel good about. But take from these stories, inshallah. Use, think about Anas. When your son is rude to you, think about how to deal with him. When somebody in the workplace who is not Muslim is rude to you, think about how the Prophet dealt with him. When somebody is harsh with you, some of our, our youngsters, our elders, may be a bit harsh sometimes. Think how to deal with them as our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa dealt with them. And you can be eh, from the best of people in this time where a lot of people are the worst of people, inshallah ta'ala. So be like our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And finally, inshallah, there's an announcement from Councillor Ali Ahmed for all our brothers who are taxi drivers. There is a meeting this uh, Tuesday, the 22nd, at Tiger Bay Suite in the first floor, Butown Health Center, for any issues with taxi drivers, uh, the chair of the licensing, licensing, licensing department will be there to answer any questions. This is a, on the 22nd of Tuesday in the Tiger Bay Suite, first floor, Butown Health Center, for our brothers, for our taxi drivers. And mashallah, many of our brothers, yeah, and sometimes we don't mention a lot of our brothers who are taxi drivers, but a lot of them have difficulties, uh, a lot of them have good manners in dealing with people who are drunk, in dealing with women who are rude. And subhanAllah, some of these people end up becoming Muslim because of these taxi drivers who sit here in this mosque. I know the masajid, inshallah, ta'ala. So we ask Allah, that Allah give our, our brothers who are taxi drivers the strength. And our brothers who work in restaurants at night, inshallah, they, they, they see a lot of bad things. But I think their iman, inshallah, is strong, inshallah, ta'ala. And many people get affected by them, inshallah, ta'ala. So increase in this and have adab and have akhlaq. عباد الله اعلموا انه لا نفع الانسان في هذا الزمان لا في قصاد حسن اطفاله في سر الوحاد واستغفاره عنا 